Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying a new uh, little device here and it just wasn't working. But this is Randy with the Valentine Goose channel, also known as Star Thinker. Um, just got back from a carnival. And carnivals, oh, I dropped like a hundred bucks and got nothing to show for it. Uh, there were long lines and you know when there's long lines, because it's the first day of the carnival. And there's long lines and they were only loading every other seat on every single ride. So like Ferris wheel had a seat, empty seat, seat, empty seat, spinny thing. Every other seat was empty. And it makes you wonder, like, what's going on? <laughs> Are these rides not capable of being fully loaded? Because uh, it was literally every single ride there, they were only loading every other seat. Even with the long lines and stuff. And then I went to get food. And, of course, it was ungodly expensive. And it took 40 minutes oh i thought i was gonna die just standing in the sun for 40 minutes um but yeah i'm not gonna do that again and uh i still got 20 tickets left over uh but anyway i had lots of fun i had grandkids with me and uh they were kind of behaving and uh i ended up buying this big parachute seat cushion thing anyway it looked like a lot of fun, and it was tougher than I thought, so I thought, hey, I'll drop 30 bucks on it. Uh, I haven't looked online to see what they really are worth, but uh, I know <laughs> I brought it home. My daughter laid down it in the sun. She says, I'm never getting out of this thing. So, um, probably money well spent. Anyway, I was, uh, I was just browsing the internet, as one is wont to do, and, uh, you know, in 2002... This man would, uh, was an activist. He wanted to uh, scan the coast of California to record uh, how much erosion was going on. And he actually took a photo, I think it was every 50 feet. Um, but he, he photographed the entire coastline of California. And, uh, you know, his idea was that, you know, he was going to do this again in a couple of years and compare the two and see how much erosion was. Well... Barbara Streisand has a house on the coast, and she said she didn't want her house featured in this coastline, but no one even knew, like, which picture had her house. In fact, it's estimated that most of the people that looked at the pictures were her lawyers trying to find her house, and her house was viewed a total of six times, and two times it was uh, viewed by the lawyers. Um... And they viewed other pictures, so they must have been looking for her house. So it couldn't have been that easy to find. And they sued the guy. They said, we want your picture taken out. And he says, I'm not taking the picture of the house out. Uh, you're going to, you know, let's take this to court. And when it went to court, her one picture uh, ended up being downloaded like 30,000 times. And um, the judge says, no, it's a public picture. It's it's not a picture of your house. It's a picture of the coastline. And, and the guy won the suit, and Barbara had to pay his lawyer bills. And uh, this is known as the Streisand effect, where the um, attempt to hide something actually makes it more desirable to find, to it actually puts more light on the subject. And I think this is exactly the way this, this Forrest Fenn thing is going. There's, you know, I keep hearing, oh, we don't want any more publicity we want this to rest we should just drop it but it's not going to drop because it's not finished if at the very end Forrest had put the solve out um we probably would not even be talking about that hunt today uh like it you know jack would be living in peace we probably wouldn't know his name but uh it would have been over. We knew somebody found it. There wouldn't be all these conspiracy theories. There wouldn't be all this stuff going on. Um, you know, if he had just said here, this is where it was. And uh, there's a lot of things. I've said this like in the last three videos. So I'm really repeating myself. I don't buy the fact that they want or Jack wants to keep the area sacred and stuff and I, I think in my last video or the video before i compared it to buddy holly's uh crash site uh, people visit that every single day um there are days you know the, the anniversary of the crash uh 
in, in February, uh, his birthday. There's various days where you could go out there and there'll be hundreds of people. And you don't find a lick of trash. You don't find trampled areas. You don't find trees torn down. You don't find people starting fires or destroying the landmark or graffiti, you know. And if that can survive for the last 50 years without without any issues, why couldn't Fen Spot survive? Um, there's a lot less people. I can, I can tell you right now, there's a lot less people that would go visit Fen site than the Buddy Holly site. And uh, I just don't see people there every single day. I don't see people there in the wintertime. They probably couldn't even get to it in the wintertime. Um, yeah, that does, that, that does not hold water. Plus the fact that Forrest said, here it is. Here's my spot. And if the person, you know, if, if the person who had found the, the chest, uh, did come up and say, oh, well, this is where I found it. And Forrest would have been perfectly happy with that. Everyone would know. And like I said, it would just be dropped there. I mean, there might be a couple hundred people that over the course of a year, two years might go visit that spot. And that is more people than that, uh, have walked past my token every day it's just funny i just don't buy that part of it i uh um i i do think i don't know i'm not going to get into conspiracy theories there's, there's enough out there um but uh yeah there's i that is the one thing i just don't get and i don't follow and i don't understand uh so what else is new uh oh i i feel like you know, whenever I see people talk about their treasure hunts, and there's a couple new ones out there, and um, they talk about what was important to them, and it's it's kind of I'm going to toot my own horn here, but it's like I feel good when people say I wanted to incorporate incorporate this in my hunt, and I'm like, ooh, I incorporated that in my hunt. Uh, you know, people say, well, we like to solve word play and and read the text and figure out where the clues are in the text and there's that in my book and people are like well i like a cold cut case of coding and i'm like that's i got clear cut coding people like to solve things right away to feel like they're gaining traction and i have graduated puzzles that a novice can solve a couple the meteor medium people can solve a couple and then the experts can solve a couple uh boots on the ground i love having boots on the ground and going to a site and like what does this site have in common with this site and then what does this site how is it different from this site and then you go to the third site and you take those things and you're like oh you know this is in common but this is different and then this fits this one and this one and you can have that okay moment and uh, I just, I love that. And, and people have said that and I'm like, Oh, uh, that's in my hunt. So I'm just blowing my own horn. I tried to get everything in the hunt. I tried to make it so a lone person could work on it. I knew for a fact, people would share things on the internet. Um, that's things, that's something I learned from Mike Stather. He was shocked. He said he didn't think anyone would share things on the internet. So I'm like, yeah, so my hunt is designed to be shared on the internet. Uh, it's also designed not to be shared. Uh, it can be worked many different ways. And I just, I, I can't, re I, I think it was the hunt for history and then some of the Dan stuff and some of the Jack stuff and talking about the, the various hunts where I saw that. And I was like, oh, I kind of feel good that my puzzle did that, you know, and um, there's things that anyone can solve anywhere in the book. Uh so, yeah, the Streisand effect. I think, you know, Forrest family would be at peace. I think all the lawsuits would have stopped. I think everything would have just calmed down. If it was in the park, I think the park would have just released something and said, hey, never do this again. If we catch anybody hiding treasure in, in the park again, we'll throw the book at you. But, you know, here's a treasure that was found. It was legally, apparently, handed over to Forrest and he gave it back so it's actually a lost and found situation and not not a stolen merchandise situation 
Uh, I don't think they have a leg to stand on to sue anybody. Um, Forrest is dead, so you can't sue him. Um, you know, it's just like, <laughs> let it go. And, and I'm pretty sure the park would have done that. They would have said, okay, because it would have been really, really bad publicity to say, hey, we're going to sue the family of Forrest Fenn, you know, his estate, to, I, I don't even know what they would sue him for, for people digging up the grave but they you know the like the person who dug up the grave he he paid and he's in jail and he's paying the price and uh that's not on force that's what a person did and and you know it's just like it's this dry in effect if if this would all go away if someone would just say it was right here and um <clears throat> once they do that like i said Everything will just dry up. People will move on. I like to hunt for history. It sounds like some people are close. Um, if I hadn't used, I had to use up some days because when I'm quarantined uh, for COVID, I had to use up vacation days before I could get, uh, what do they call it? Uh, I don't know, comp days or whatever. Um, so I, I did plan on like just going to Indiana and like just staying there for a whole week. Uh, but it was really interesting to watch the interview because he said there was another way of solving that with the map and that, that was really interesting. I have a feeling there, um, uh, and I won't say where I saw this before, but like if you take a map and like figure out the points on the map where you're supposed to go and, and draw lines, you might get a shape, you might get certain things crossing, you, you might get a location uh, but that's what it sounded like. he said that was the pirate way so there's probably something on the map that says boom it's right here and it might have something to do with the locations and, and drawing lines and stuff so here ah, and I'm way short of my 20 minutes and I don't really have anything else to say um yeah carnival kids are doing great my daughter had her eyelid snipped off oh um finally got some help at work uh, i trained them i was on days for two weeks and i oh my god i thought that was going to kill me <laughs> i'm like i want to go back to my nights where i'm the only one in the building just me and the ghost and uh don't have to deal with yeah it's the thing that got me the most about being on days is i'd be sitting there working when someone would come in and say, hey, you got an adapter, I'd be like, yeah, here's an adapter. And then they would talk for a half an hour about fishing and boats and barbecues and and vacations and what their kids are doing. And I'm just like, do they do this every day? Is this how people on day shift do things? You know, I... I am just not a chatter. And for the most part, I would sit there and listen and interject and, you know, just be a listener and um <laughs> it's just like wow i couldn't believe how much time i spent just talking to someone because they just didn't want to go back to work or you know they wanted to talk and i can't remember like me talking other than training the new guys um but <laughs> it's just weird you know it's like hey you know Guess what I did this weekend? I did this and this and this. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> There's a half hour that I could have been working. So I think night shift really suits me. And I can't wait to get back. And uh, that's going to be fun. Any other treasure stuff? Uh, oh, uh, and I, I, hate, I hate to say this, but my brilliant ex-roommate... She's doing fantastic, by the way. She got her bachelor's degree. She's now a certified counselor, and she now she's got to go for her master's and doctorate. And um, she's blown away. You know, she's, is it summa cum laude? You know, she's got the high grade point average. Um, and uh, she was conferred, you know, the bachelor's degree, and that got her a head up in, the, in her job and stuff. And she's doing fantastic. There's days where she 
she'll text me. She says, I feel happy today. And that, that's strange because her whole life has been dealing with these celebrities and, and, and publicity and bad publicity and scandals. And, you know, she's like, I'm, I just took the cat out for a walk because she's got a stroller for the cat. And she's like, I feel happy. And I am not used to feeling happy. And I'm like, I'm glad you feel happy. <laughs> that makes me feel good. Um, so she saw me, I, I posted something on Facebook. I posted a picture of, of the sixes or something. And she said, you're not still working on that, are you? I'm like, yes, I am. And she found a book. I don't know how she does it, but she found this book that actually like worked with the letters. And I'm like, I don't know if this is right or not because it didn't like make a perfect thing. But there's a character in the book named Naomi and uh, Na Naimo. And uh, I'm like, wow, that's kind of a coincidence. And then she found another book where the town is named Naimo uh, and the character is named Opal. And the, in the other book, the character was named Naimo and the town was named Opal. So there's all these really weird coincidences. And, um, it's just, I don't know how she finds this stuff, but I couldn't pull, you know, we started with chapter six and uh, we couldn't pull uh, things out. Uh, you can be down here. You just got to be really quiet because I'm recording. Okay. Video. All right. Yeah. Okay. I thought you couldn't be down here till seven. Um, I can't play video games until seven. Oh, and seven's when you got to quit? No, I can't play video games until seven. Oh, so you're just hanging out down here till seven? Yeah. Sorry, that was my grandson, um, who doesn't get dressed ever. <laughs> I miss you dressed. Go, go. <laughs> go watch TV or whatever you're going to do. But no, use your headphones because I'm recording. Either way, I would have to use my headphones. Yeah. Okay, good. Anyway, um, yeah, so I don't know if this is right or not. It's just, it's a coincidence um, that she found a book that referred to the new world that had a character named Naimo and a town called Opal. And, you know, we're going through it and, and getting actual words and stuff out of the, the strings and, but not a message. And I'm like, to me, the code will be a message and it'll be a clear cut message. And, um, I tried to match the pictures and then the pictures kind of matched, you know, and I'm like, Ooh, you know, you get that weird feeling I just don't know if it's right or not. Uh, Can I eat this? Naomi, Naimo, if you're out there, uh, let me know if it's a book. <laughs> Is it a book, a pamphlet, a web page? Because um, this book like really fits. And then she found another book. She goes, this is really weird because this book, the woman is named Opal. The town is named Naomo. Um, and there's still elements that match the pictures, but it's a completely different book. I'm like, how do you find these things? <laughs> He goes, well, I just know what to Google and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, that's very interesting, and uh, it beats my uh, Caden. <laughs> All right, if you don't go sit down, you have to go back upstairs. Um, it beats my uh, number crunching and brute forcing, and because uh, I haven't pulled much out of that. Uh, so it's just, it's very, very interesting. I'm going to go beat up my, my grandchild right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call it quits. It's almost 20 minutes. Uh, so I covered covered the, the, the hint, I don't know, the piece of the new world. Uh, dry Zan effect. I don't know, just, and a little bit of the, the other one, the hunt for history. Because I do have the map, I do have the book, and... Uh, you know, I can't remember how far I got because uh, I know people were stumped on three, but I can't remember if I even looked at three or not. Because it seems like you have to be there to pull stuff off of monuments and things, and and which I, I would love that. And uh, I thought about just driving there and just parking in the county and just working on it for, a, you know, a couple days. It just seemed like that would be the thing to do. But now I'm wondering if if that's even necessary so yeah i might pull the map back out i'm not even sure what they do with it it's around here somewhere <laughs>
um, and and take a look at it. I also have, if you look right here, I have a robot hand I got to put together, and uh, that's for a project I'm doing. It's very private. Um, I'm getting things together. I got to make a costume. It's gonna be fun. So anyway, I gotta go, and you guys take care, and have a nice night. Oh, I'm gonna try my thingy here. Did it stop? It's not stopping. See, it started it, but it doesn't stop it. And it's Bluetooth, and I'm close enough to the phone. See, if the blue light is coming on. Anyway, have a good night.